Hi, this is Simon Canlish, and welcome to another Marvelous Videos. Since we were kids, we've heard tales about supernatural creatures, ranging from vampires to werewolves, and even fairies. Today, we'll be focusing specifically on werewolves, and how exactly these creatures function on a physiological level. There have been ample movies, books, and television series that have talked of them as a diverse range of werewolves over the years in fiction. Their specifications and physical features have changed a lot from one depiction to another, and all of these werewolves great vary from one another. Today we will try to cover the general anatomical details of a werewolf and tell you all about this mythical creature. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks, and let's begin. How does one turn into a werewolf? In typical fashion, the bite of a werewolf would infect a person and cause them to transform into a werewolf as well. However, there are unique scenarios wherein one could become a werewolf after drinking werewolf blood, being cursed by a deity, or using magical spells to transform willingly. In some cases, it is seen that even using any object made with werewolf fur is enough to trigger a transformation. In one folkloric tale, drinking from a wolf's paw print or even eating tomatoes can turn one into to a werewolf. Initially, werewolves were only created due to witchcraft after being cursed by a witch. In medieval Europe history, werewolves were seen as helpless victims who were cursed by witches. At the same time, some other legends believed that the witches were vulnerable and they had only resorted to cursing humans into turning into werewolves after being attacked by them. Over the years, this lore has seen changes as most modern adaptations of werewolves have shown that they turned into this monster after being bitten by a werewolf. This was seen in the 1941 one movie, The Wolfman, which popularized this method of turning into a werewolf. However, it was seen that lycanthropy could also be inherited and passed down through generations, and this was also seen in The Vampire Diaries, wherein this lycanthropy was triggered after their first kill. In this show, the first werewolf was created by a witch as revenge, and ever since, members of the werewolf's family have contracted the disease in future generations. After the family member killed someone intentionally or on purpose, their lycanthropy gene was activated and they were helpless as their body started undergoing transformation. Is lycanthropy basically an infection? Generally, werewolves were not created by birth, but were actual human beings who were infected by a werewolf curse. They transformed into werewolves after being bitten or scratched by another werewolf, and sometimes they were even infected if they came in contact with a werewolf's paw print or on a full moon. One can say that lycanthropy is an infection if we go by this logic, and it's also seen that teenagers age 11 to 17 are most vulnerable to lycanthropy. Almost half of the werewolves in fiction fall in the this age bracket, and it's also suggested that the hormonal changes in males during puberty make them more susceptible to this infection. Besides, lycanthropy can also be inherited by one's parents and stay in one's bloodlines, causing all future generations to be infected by it. Artificially, lycanthropy infected can be induced by injecting a human with a mix of herbs such as Sitsui and Hisasu, which will turn them into werewolves. These herbs cause one to experience rage and fury, and they also remain in a werewolf form throughout their life. What triggers werewolves to transform, and how is the transformation process? Usually, it is seen that a full moon causes a werewolf to first transform in his lupin form. However, specific triggers cause them to change from human to werewolf forms. Feelings of anger, sadness, or experiencing too much adrenaline causes them to lose control and turn into a werewolf. And they could also turn into this form if they needed to protect someone. When a werewolf feels triggered, his eyes change color, and he immediately feels a surge in aggression and rage. Usually they experience this during a full moon, but any threatening situation can trigger them to transform. Any werewolf's first transformation process is quite painful, and they must endure endless hours of pain during this process. After enduring this transformation, werewolves can instantly transform whenever they want. During this transformation, the werewolf felt a burning sensation on any part of their body covered in clothing, which can then cause them to tear all their clothes off. Their human bones also changed as they broke and reshaped into a bone structure of a 
dwarf skeleton. This process caused a lot of discomfort, and the person grew a coat of fur and fangs. Their eyes also changed color and became yellow or green, and they assumed the form of a werewolf. After this transformation, a werewolf remains in this form until the first rays of sunlight. Initially, a werewolf experienced muscle pain after the first transformation, but they eventually managed to control themselves and even sleep through the whole process without feeling much pain. After a while, werewolves would even sleep naked on full moon so that they don't have to tear away their clothes when their body starts changing. How does the position of a moon influence werewolves? While humans sometimes rely on astrology and zodiac signs to interpret their traits, werewolf biology was greatly influenced by the moon's position. The werewolves were bound to a particular phase of the moon, which was determined according to the phase during their birth, that is, during their first transformation. In this classification system, each moon phase was labeled differently according to the months and changes 12 times a year. Werewolves born in January were known to be born during the ice moon and are even known as ice wolves. It is stated that these wolves could endure freezing weather and their bites were as cold as a grave. Moreover, ice wolves were considered calm, quiet and very introspective creatures and they usually preferred to hunt in packs of six. Werewolves born during February were born under the storm moon and were known as storm wolves. In the fictional world, it is believed that the touch of a storm wolf can cause an individual to experience a static electric shock. These wolves were known for being very serious and analytical. Political. Werewolves born in March were known as the Wind Wolves and were believed to be the fastest wolves. They also had an enhanced sense of smell and they were pretty intense and stubborn in nature. April born wolves were born under the influence of the Wild Moon and they were known as Wild Wolves and had greater probability of having red brown fur. They also had the ability to interact with the wilderness and call out other animals for help and they were very funny and cheerful creatures. Werewolves born in May were known as Flame Wolves as they were born under the influence of the fire moon. It was a common belief that they were immune to fire, and they also came across as independent and kind-hearted werewolves. June-born werewolves were known as the mirror wolves, and they were born under the mirror moon. They were curious, spontaneous, and well-groomed creatures, and were known for their communication skills and ability to make friends easily. July-born werewolves were born under the ghost moon, and were known as ghost wolves. They all had white pelts and very bright red or blue eyes, and they could turn transparent. Ghost wolves were reserved and distant, and they even had some connections with the other realms. Werewolves born in August were born under the Lightning Moon and called Lightning Wolves. They were the second fastest werewolves after the Wind Wolves and were immune to any electrical shocks. Werewolves born in September were born under the Singing Moon, and they were powerful since they were born in the first full moon that occurs around the autumnal equinox. This increased their powers and compelled them to wander around in farm fields and areas closer to human settlements. Werewolves born in October were born under the influence of the Blood Moon, and they were typically very aggressive in nature since they were born around Halloween. They were also known to be born under the Hunter's Moon or the Sanguine Moon, and they were spotted quite often around the end of October. Werewolves born in November were born under the Frost Moon and had white fur and sharp blue eyes. There is not much information about them as they are very mysterious creatures. Werewolves born in December were born under the Oak Moon and sometimes could not even transform into wolves. This typically happened due to Christmas as the power of the festivities resulted in a decrease in werewolf activities and attacks. However, if the year was to have a 13th full moon in December, then these werewolves turned even more aggressive and caused even more chaos than usual. Every year, werewolves transform back into their human form during a lunar eclipse, and it is also rumored that the werewolf virus can be destroyed entirely on this day. On the contrary, any werewolf born when the moon is closest to Earth, aka the supermoon, was even more aggressive and fierce. Under this supermoon, werewolves were seen to be even more potent than usual and were known to be at their most aggressive self. basic classifications of werewolves. Typically, werewolves run in packs and their different positions such as alpha, beta, delta, gamma, and omegas within a pack. The alpha was essentially the pack's leader and the most dangerous werewolf. They had bright red eyes and a tall physique of up to nine feet and could even turn into complete wolves. Any werewolf could become an alpha by either killing the previous alpha of the pack or just rising above in ranks by displaying their strength and exerting authority over the others. They were stronger than betters, 
Omegas, pure breeds, and all other werewolves, and they had great control over their animalistic tendencies. Most of the werewolves within a pack were betters and were found in large numbers in all packs. They were strong werewolves who did not specialize in any ability, but they always moved in large numbers and came together to defend the group. They were the elite soldiers of the pack, and they were used either two or all four legs to walk. They were known for their sharp teeth, claws, and orange eyes. The Deltas were smaller wolves who acted as soldiers and protected the rest of the pack, and they even had retractable claws and the ability to stand on two legs. They appeared more as lions and wolves, and they had the head, tail, and fur of a wolf, along with the body and sharp claws of a lion. Delta wolves were also classified by their yellow eyes and primarily protected the pack. The Gammas were the pack's hunters and looked like just regular wolves but with bigger bodies. They usually scouted food and hunted for the pack, and they had grey eyes and sharp claws that differentiated them from the rest of the group. The Omegas were essentially lone, strong werewolves who existed outside the group. They sometimes lived as outcasts outside their pack, and they typically had blue eyes and a tall physique of up to six to seven feet. Omegas could stand on two feet, but they used all four feet while running. Besides, these werewolves were also classified as pure breeds. The pure breeds were werewolves who had lycanthropy in their blood, and they were not infected by any curse. They were born in a pack of werewolves right from birth, and the pure breeds were usually more respected than the non-pure breeds. Some werewolves were also known as Vargulfs, a term given to any werewolf who had gone rabid and mentally unstable. These Vargulfs had dark black eyes, and they totally given in to their wolf side and become completely feral. Can werewolves possess magical powers? In some fictional works, the pack's alphas possess the ability to contact someone physically and communicate with them telepathically. However, werewolves generally do not have any magical powers and rely on their brutal strength and animalistic nature to tackle any problem. Of course, it does not seem entirely impossible for werewolves to do magic since they are mythical creatures and there are no rules prohibiting werewolves from dabbling in magic in the fictional world. How do the healing abilities of werewolves work? Werewolves do not have the ability to regrow or regenerate any body parts, and they cannot magically heal any injuries or wounds. While many supernatural creatures can regenerate any limbs or even self-heal, any damages caused to a werewolf in either human or wolf form will remain as it is and only heal with time or adequate treatment. If a werewolf were to lose a limb, then the particular body part would remain to be missing for the rest of his life. In the werewolf form, they can heal from injuries at a speedier pace than humans, but just like humans, a werewolf's hair and nails would keep growing no matter how many times they have been cut or destroyed, but otherwise they do not possess any regenerative abilities. Can werewolves reproduce? Typically, werewolves find a mate after their first transformation, and this concept of finding a partner is similar to the human idea of soulmates. Werewolves are known to be very possessive of their mates, and these desired partners are allegedly chosen by their god, the moon goddess. Werewolves believe that the moon goddess mates them for life, and they can reproduce with their mate and even have offsprings. Typically, a male werewolf starts purring when he finds a suitable female mate, while the female werewolf's body changes to attract mates. Their hair grows longer, and they even become come taller during this time, known as their mating aid. After mating, the werewolf's pair becomes very well tuned with each other and they can even read each other's thoughts and feel their mate's emotions. Usually the alpha werewolf mates with the lunar or the alpha female, and the lunar then serves as a mother to the pack. On the other hand, the, the better male mates with the better female, and it usually observed that werewolves only mate with partners who belong to the same classification rank. Sometimes werewolves mate with humans in the world of fiction, but these situations are rare and also quite dangerous since the werewolf's gene can complicate the pregnancy. When werewolves mate, they pass on their spirit from generation to generation. However, the werewolf's curse is not dominant, and there is a chance that a child born out of a relationship between a werewolf and a human might be a regular human and not a werewolf. When werewolves mate with each other, the female werewolf gives birth to a small litter of wolves with two to four babies after three to six months of pregnancy. Werewolves are essentially mammals, so they give birth to kids in a regular human form. Later on, this child may transform during a full moon. So far, there are not any popular pieces of fiction wherein a werewolf child has been born in their animalistic form, but this can also be a possibility explored in fiction. <laughs> 
Is it possible to kill a werewolf? Generally, it has been seen that most werewolves can be killed using silver and that their skin burns when it comes in contact with the metal. While they are immune to attacks by ordinary knives or weapons, silver blades or bullets have often been used in various fictional works to destroy them. Of course, this is not always the case, and werewolves in the Vampire Diaries were actually immune to silver. Werewolves can also be killed with the help of various plants, such as Belladonna or Asinite. Belladonna is a type of nightshade that acts as a poison to them, and asinite has anti-evil properties that can repel werewolves. Asinite is also called wolf's bane, and a concoction was made from the roots of this plant to cure people infected by the werewolf curse, or even attack werewolves. Werewolves can also be easily killed by other supernatural beings stronger than them, and they are also vulnerable to magic. Any contact with witches can cause werewolves to suffer from dire side effects, such as the inability to switch forms or slow down transformation. At the end of the day, werewolves are part humans and exist as humans for a good part of a month. Hence, they can die if they are caught in any accident or experience a loss of blood, but they usually switch forms and manage to heal at a faster rate and prevent such deaths. However, extracting a werewolf's heart or snapping his neck in two are some ways that can assure his death. Additionally, werewolves can also suffer from mistletoe poisoning and die if they are not given treatment soon. Werewolves can also be subdued by continuously shocking them with mild forms of electricity electricity, which would keep them weakened and incapable of attacking their opponents. Another barrier hindering a werewolf's functioning is mountain ash, also known as the rowan tree. Mountain ash can prevent a werewolf from stepping into a particular area and can even keep them confined within a particular place. Can a werewolf in human form be killed with a bullet? Typically, werewolves can be killed in their human forms with the help of a bullet, since they are essentially human. One would think that a bullet shot can quickly end their lives. However, werewolves are supernatural beings at the end of the day, and just one single bullet cannot do much harm. They can always transform into a werewolf and use their fur and enhanced bodies to heal at an accelerated rate. However, if one to constantly shoot at a werewolf in his human form and injure him with four to five bullet shots, then it would become quite difficult for the werewolf to endure the pain, and he might end up dead. Werewolves are not entirely indestructible, and using a good tactic to ensure that they stay down and lose blood in their human form after shooting at them will probably result in their death. Conclusion. So to sum it up, werewolves are fascinating creatures, and they are widespread across the history of fiction. From Twilight to Harry Potter, werewolves have made up an essential part of various storylines, and their unique anatomical details have made them very popular in pop culture. And if you liked our content, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.